Mercedes have exited yet another disappointing race in Jeddah, and after Russell and Hamilton finished only P6 and P9, the younger Brit had a very worrying admission about the performance of the W15. Although the Silver Arrows adopted a new philosophy and a new design of the car, it seems like this is not enough, and they would have to wait until 2026 to be competitive. But this doesn't end the trouble in Mercedes, as they need to look into the intra-team battle that is slowly but surely shaping up to be a Russell-favoured one. But with Russell being completely dissatisfied with the car, after admitting it was made based on Hamilton's comments in the off-season, could this be a solid foundation for a further raffle? And more importantly, how will this end? Now, it's safe to say that Mercedes had a massive lack of pace compared to the rest of the grid, and even on two separate strategies, the Silver Arrows have barely managed to make solid results out of a track that they expected to suit them a lot more. This goes because the rear wing of the car was much larger due to the low downforce requirements of the Jeddah Corniche circuit, and with the modification made on the front wing, Mercedes had a lot of hope that they could be competitive come race and quality time. But that was definitely not the case, and when talking about this matter, Russell has sent a very alarming omission regarding the pace of the W15, one that, while supposed to improve in the following period, has seemingly taken the wrong route backwards. Elaborating on this matter even more, the Brit went on to add, We're still trying to understand this car, because we've shown true performance at points over the last two weekends. FP1, straight out of the box, we were at the top of the timesheets, and always in the top three. FP2, P2, then both weekends, the pace just fell away from us. That hasn't been our competitors getting faster, that's been us getting slower. So we need to understand why that is, but it's fine margins now. It's so close with ourselves, McLaren, Aston, Leclerc is just a smidge ahead, we just need to tap into it a bit more. Well, if we're to look at the Saudi Arabian GP, we wouldn't say that Leclerc is just a bit faster than Russell and Mercedes, because the Brit was not even able to get past the Aston Martin of Alonso, both of which were on the same tyre strategy. The encouraging news is that McLaren seems to lack a lot of straight line speed, which is why Hamilton was able to defend a lot more on older tyres compared to Oscar Piastri, even with the Aussie having DRS with much fresher tyres. But when the real challenge came to pass Lando Norris, with both Brits being on the soft tyre, the situation was much different, and Hamilton also had a lot to say about what the car lacked severely in 2024. The Mercedes fans, as well as the rest of the F1 world, they grow sick and tired of listening to excuses as to why the car isn't working the way it should be. Although the gap to Verstappen ahead is abysmal and quite impossible to catch, the number two spot in the Constructors' Championship was the realistic goal of Mercedes headed into 2024. Not only did they fail to do so in the first two races, but they now slipped behind McLaren in the championship at P4. And quite honestly, if Stroll had a bit more competitive pace in him, I don't think Mercedes would have an easy time keeping this P4 spot too. When talking about all of the deficit that Mercedes has in 2024, as well as whether or not there is a chance they could catch up with the front of the grid, Hamilton went on to say, the car is relatively good at low speed corners and not so bad at medium speed ones, but at high speed corners, we're miles off. It was like I was in a different category when I was going through the high speed between the other guys around me. It's frustrating for sure to be three years in a row in almost the same position. It's definitely tough, but we'll get our heads down and keep working away, and I know everyone back at the factory is pushing as hard as they can. We've definitely got to make some big changes. We haven't made big enough changes, perhaps. If you look at the three teams ahead of us, they still have different concepts of where we are in some areas. So we've got some performance to add, that's for sure. Now, to add salt to the wound, it seems like Mercedes still hasn't gotten rid of one very important issue that plagued their car's performance in the past couple of years, the bouncing. Hamilton added that when he tried to push the car to the absolute limit, he was prevented by this phenomenon, especially in the high-speed corners, and it only makes you wonder whether or not Mercedes have done a good enough job back in Brackley when it comes to toning the car and finding the sweet spot for the car's setup. The situation is quite depressing for Mercedes if you think about it, because not only are they missing massively compared to the teams they hoped they could fight in 2024, but it seems like the philosophy of the car is still lacking some severely important factors to be competitive, even though it's been moderated and changed with a lot of feedback implemented from Russell and Hamilton. This only goes to justify the move of Hamilton to Ferrari, because while the Maranello team isn't in the best form themselves, they've surely made a step forward when it comes to challenging Red Bull and being closer to the pack. 
release when 2026 comes. Toto Wolf hasn't also saved words when it comes to explaining the current situation the team is in. And just after two races in the season, it does look like we're going to have a very depressing situation in Mercedes, in which they'll collect lots of data and will fight in the midfield. To make things worse, they still haven't found a candidate to replace Hamilton, and now that the situation in Red Bull has simmered down, the bombshell move of Verstappen replacing Hamilton is far from becoming a reality, and Mercedes would have to focus more on bringing a driver like Alonso to fill in the gap that Hamilton left behind him. Although, when you look at the pace of Mercedes in the past couple of years, as well as their competitiveness, even though Hamilton did finish third in 2023 and was the fastest non-Red Bull driver out there, it does raise some questions when it comes to who is at fault, the drivers or the engineers, for faulty implementation of feedback. When talking about the Saudi Arabian GP, Wolf went on to say, it's clear that we're struggling with the car in the high-speed corners. We are competitive elsewhere, but in three corners here, we were losing about half a second. It was therefore incredibly difficult for the drivers to attack with. We tried something different on the strategy, but unfortunately, with the low levels of degradation we saw across the field, it did not work for us. There is so much learning we can take from these first two race weekends. We need to get our heads down to analyze, understand, and improve. It's clear that we've got a lot of work to do but these tough days make you better. Everyone is committed to getting the car into a better place and we look forward to coming back stronger in Australia. Well, all of these statements do seem like a deja vu scenario for Mercedes. And one can help but wonder, is there a time and a place where the Silver Arrows can bounce back from the misery they found themselves in? Even if you look at the driver's standings, you'll notice that Hamilton only has eight points with his teammates having 18 and seemingly far more favoured compared to the seven-time world champion, considering the fact that it was Russell who got the better strategy compared to Hamilton in Jeddah. Be that as it may, even the engineers like Andrew Shovlin do not have a lot of hope seeing from what happened in Saudi Arabia, understanding that not only is there a lot of work to be done, but there is a vast deficit compared to their rivals who have done much better work during the winter and the pre-season testing. When talking about this, Andrew Shovlin went on to say, We've not performed well this weekend. Our high-speed performance has been weak and the car is bouncing in those corners. That contributed to our poor qualifying, but it also meant we couldn't challenge Aston Martin and the McLarens in the race. We were losing so much time in Sector 1 that we spent the rest of the lap clawing it back. Overall, it's been a very frustrating weekend, but ultimately one of our own making. Well, with all this in mind, what do you think about Mercedes' lack of pace in 2024 so far? And more importantly, do you think that the Silver Arrows have subsequently dropped into the midfield with this lack of performance? Let us know in the comments down below.